So I've come here today to, to harvest the kohanga. So this will be my third harvest. So yeah, the first part will be to cut the blades, which really is cleaning each bush. And I'll gather the harakeki and then prepare it and take it back to the studio to finish stripping it in the studio. Yeah, so the batch will probably take about maybe a week, you know, to, to prepare. I'm going to be gathering 7,000 strips, so I get two per blade. So that's about 3,500 blades for the project. And I'm going to gather all of it from the Auckland Botanic Garden. Yeah, I'm really interested in the work that the material connects to place. And, and the resource here, it's, it's such a valuable resource for weavers. The fact that they have all of the varieties identified, so you know what you're working with. Until you start weaving, you tend to just look at it and think it's, it's all the same plant, but they are so different. So I've been working at the moment with three varieties. So the kohanga is quite long, you know, so that'll be quite good. I'm looking for a bit of length. Um, this one's quite white, yeah. I think it's a favourite of the maniapoto, so. Not one I've worked with a lot before. It's the responsibility that we have to the plant and that in our caring and looking after it, you know, in that ongoing way, in that process, then it will continue to give to us. Yeah, so that's really important and how we cut, when we cut is all really a part of the tikanga. My practice and my, you know, my master's research was looking at the life force of material. So that's usually what I'm thinking about when I harvest. Like the plants are so alive, you know, and they and they're still alive even once I've cut them. So I am really interested in working with that life force. So I've brought all the harakeki back from the gardens, and now I'm just going to split to the size I need, and then. The next process is to expose the mocha with the mussel shell, which is just um, scraping along it, applying a bit of pressure, and that reveals all the fibre. Then the next step is to roll it on the leg. The mero, well that creates the thread, so it strengths in it, and it stops the fibres from splaying out, but that's really how you create the thread. And that's what I'll be weaving, you know, that is what will be woven. This is the finer aho for the stitching across, for the, basically the finger weaving. So it's a finer thread, longest fibre that I can get. These are used to stitch the pokinikini, which are, these are all the strands that have been um, mirrored, rolled and dried. Really what I'm aiming for is a really robust construction that's going to last outdoors in four months in any sort of condition. So the, the method is based on a rain cape, a Māori rain cape. So I'm very confident it's, got, it's designed to kind of withstand rain. Apparently they were incredibly efficient in repelling water, so I think it's going to be fabulous when it's outside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>